Howdy folks, uh, Troy with V-Twins, the V8s, I'm back today to do another project. Today we're going to do a disc brake conversion for the front, and we're going to do it on something a little bit different. I mean, everybody seems to do, you know, Camaros and Chevelles and Mustangs and all these types of cars. Well, we're going to do something completely different. We're going to do it on a big car. I mean, behind me here I got a 64 Imperial convertible that I'm restoring for a client and I figured it'd be a perfect time to uh, come on and show you folks how to do a disc brake conversion on something out of the norm. So I've got this whole kit right here that I had actually I had it assembled and made by the folks at, at ABS Power Brakes in California and uh, it's very similar to uh, the later model um, Imperials and full-size Dodges, but you just can't pick up the phone and buy a kit for these cars. It's just, it just doesn't happen. Um, you can try, trust me I did, but you can't. Uh, after a lot of research I found some guys that would actually make me the kit. It's a really basic kit. Basically we, what we have is we have some bracketry that uh, bolts to the spindle, uh, a couple of rotors, and a couple of calipers, the lines, and other than that, I mean we're good to go. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our uh, our subject vehicle and disassemble it, and we're going to um, we're going to get going on this. So what I've done here is I've already taken the brake drum off, and we're going to walk through this on a step-by-step -step basis. So uh, stay tuned, and we'll be on. Here is I've already taken, I removed my tire, I placed it on the lift. Yada yada yada. I've removed the brake drum so that you can see what's behind it. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and I'm gonna I've already disassembled this once already, so you obviously know that. So we removed our dust cap, we'll remove our axle nut. Like I said, I took this apart so everything will be very, very quick to take it apart, and then we'll get on to the actual assembly of it. So now I can just take my hub and bearing assembly off. Now on the back side of our drum assembly, we don't have to mess with any of our brakes. So if you want to make this quick and easy, just leave your brakes all alone on the backing plate because we're not going to use the backing plate again. I disconnected my brake line and with, uh, with a, um, a wrench off of the hose, removed a horseshoe clip, and now i got my brake hose hanging there. On the back side, there's going to be four bolts that hold the backing plate to the spindle. I'm going to take and remove all these nuts and then I'll be able to just slide this entire backing plate right off and all we'll have here is just the um, just the spindle. So I'm going to slide this off of here. Now when you do this you also have um, your steering arm here so we'll take that off and set that on the side for the moment I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna remove it like this I'll clean off my spindle nicely now as you can see I've just got a bare spindle here everything comes right off as a unit super quick super easy the steering arm bolts on here like this so it's an angle so it uses your bottom left bolt and your top right bolt. So those two bolts you're going to need to reuse from your backing plate. We're going to use our plate that comes in the kit. I'm not sure which side is which right now. So we're going to put it on here and see which side is which. There we go. Alright, so our holes will line up and our caliper will be in a familiar 45 degree angle like you see. So you got this like this, put your long bolts through here, like this, then you've got your steering arm that's going to go like this on the back, just like this. Now your caliper bracket's on, so I'm going to take a couple of these grade 8 bolts that I have here, they're going to go in these other two bolts, which is going to be the upper left and the bottom right. I'm going to put my lock nuts on here that come in my kit. I'm 
My other two bolts, my upper and lower for my steering shaft, are castle nuts. I should show you that. Castle nut is a nut with a slot for a um, cotter pin that goes through the bolt. It's a safety thing, obviously, because it is your steering, and you don't want your bolts to be falling off, and then you can't steer your car. That would be bad, especially a land arc like this one. So I'm going to take a moment and I'll bring the camera over here and I'll show you what we have up until this point. All right, so here we go. Here's our bracket. Here's our two short bolts that come in the kit and the two long bolts that I had to reuse. If you look at the back side of this, you can see where my steering arm is. You can see where I've got my long bolts with the castellated nuts are here and my locking bolts with my short bolts my locking nuts are here i'm going to get these tightened i'm going to put some cotter pins in here and then we're going to move on to the next part which is going to be to put the rotor on one of the things i did notice um, when i was putting this together my bracket is thicker than the backing plate that originally came off of here so I need to use these long bolts for my steering arm, but I can't use my castle nuts. I don't have enough length. Um, I could get some additional bolts with castle nuts and holes in the, in the uh, bolts with holes in them for the cotter pins and castle nuts. But in lieu of that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some locking nuts. And I'll just put four locking nuts on here. So I've already done that when I was off camera. I've got these four bolts in here. I've got them torqued down. So now my bracket is on here and I'm good to go. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the rotor on. Now to put the rotor on, there's a few things that have to happen first. Some of them I've already done is you need to put your inner bearing inside your rotor. So what we've got going on here is uh, I got a bearing that sets down inside of this rotor and then there's a dust seal that goes on top of it. I've already installed that. I'll give you a close-up with my other camera here. So here we are. This is the back side of the rotor. This is the bearing. This is the seal. Now I installed this because I basically put mock this all together before I painted all these parts. You'll notice that my rotor is all painted so that uh, as the car sits around, because the classic car is going to spend more, probably more time parked than it is going to be used that I won't have a situation where all of these parts get all nasty and rusty because they all come bare steel. So what I did was I mocked this all together, took it apart, sanded all my parts, primed them, painted them, let them dry, and now we're back to do the install. So here we are. I got my Baron's already been packed. It's already been put in here and my seal's been put on. So on the flip side of it, Basically, there's my races in, I got my new bearing here that I'm going to use, and I'm just going to put that bearing on there. I've got a nice washer with a slot in it that goes on the spindle here, and then of course a castle nut that's going to go on that spindle, and then a cotter pin as though. So, I'm going to go ahead and pack the bearing. Um, let's talk about that for a moment. Okay, so there's two different ways you can pack a bearing. Okay, you can pack it by hand, which is what I like to do, or you can pack it, use a bearing packer. This is a bearing packer. It basically is these two cone-shaped things. You set your bearing down on here like this, or like this, it doesn't really matter. This goes on here, it screws down onto your bearing, and kind of sandwiches it, and it's got a grease fitting on the top. You take your grease gun and you squeeze your grease gun and it forces the grease into this tube and it fills the center of the bearing, gets caught in this cone and forces the grease into the bearing. It's very effective and it works really great. The thing I don't like about it is, is that it fills the entire center of this with grease before it packs the bearing. So when you take this bearing out of here, it, the whole center of it's full of grease along with the bearing. And to me, it's kind of a big mess and kind of a waste of grease. Um, I do it the old school way that I was taught before I, you know, bought this $3 tool. 
and um, that is to take the bearing and the grease and to pack it in your palm. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to palm bearing, uh, grease this bearing. So I'm going to put some grease all along the edge of the bearing like this. Notice I'm not even wearing any gloves. I am a friggin' old school guy. And so I'm going to take the grease and push it into the palm of my hand. And as you can see when I do this, it forces the grease through the cage into the rollers and then it starts coming out on the outside. So as I do this, I just keep pushing my grease and boom, it keeps forcing its way to the outside. So I just keep palming, keep the grease that's in my palm and I kind of smear this across as with, I take my middle finger, push the grease that goes into the center of the race and push that back into my palm and then push this to the outside. As you do this, you'll notice the grease is starting to come out of the cage in the roller area. So that's how you actually pack a baron. That's why they call it baron packing, is because you're, you're actually packing the grease into this cage area and in with the rollers. Now, whichever way you choose to do this is totally up to you. I would figure I would just show you how to do both ways. So the next thing I want to show you is some of the stuff that comes in the kit. One of the things that comes in this kit is this spacer you see here. What this does is it goes onto the spindle and it, it spaces the rotor out probably a, roughly about the thickness of this, um, of this bracket system here that's holding the caliper. So because we have the caliper in this big thick bracket, we got to move our rotor out a little bit so our caliper will fit on there. Here's your spacer. It's coned on one side, it's flat on the other. Here's your spindle. It's got this rounded edge. So you want to take this, put this on here so the cone faces that round edge and look it, it fits right on here super nice. All right, now once you get that on there, we're ready to put our rotor on. So I got my rotor here, I got my washer, my bearings in there, I got my washer, my nut, and my cotter pin. So I'm ready to go. What I like to do is take a little bit of that extra grease that I got that I know is on the inside of that bearing, and I'm just gonna rub it on my dust seal here a little bit on the inside just like this, just to give it a little bit of lubrication. I'm going to take my bearing and set it on the side here for a second. I'm going to slide my rotor right on there like that. Take my bearing, put my bearing right in here like this. My washer has a slot in it. There's a slot on the spindle itself on the top that's going to go right in there like that. I've got my spindle nut is going to go on here and I'm going to turn this and I'm going to tighten my nut. So we're going to talk about this part of it. Okay, let's talk about wheel bearing adjustment here. Okay, so we got, I put this on here, it's pretty much hand tight. Now, this is a big, <laughs> this is a big car. Okay, so everything on it is almost truck-like. Uh, this nut is an uh, inch and a sixteenth. A lot of guys who use a pair of pliers to do this, that's fine. I kind of like to use the proper wrench when I can, and I actually have this wrench. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this, and as I tighten it, I'm going to turn this. Okay, and I'm going to continually turn my nut and turn my rotor, and then all of a sudden... What's going to happen is it's going to kind of bottom out. Like it's not really going to want me to uh, tighten it anymore. I'm almost like, yeah. All right, so now once you get there, what you want to do is you want to take and back this thing off just a little bit. So when I say just a little bit, I know that my slot is going right down through the vertical here. So I'm going to go tight. It's dragging. I'm going to back it off about a quarter of a turn. I don't have any play. 
and it's going nicely. I got my um, cotter pin right here. It's going to go right through. I take it and I feel it like this. See if I have any play. If I do, I can take this and tighten it just a little bit. See what we got. Gonna back that off just a little bit more. What you want it is you want it snug down, and then you want to take a little bit of the pressure off of it. So I say a quarter of a turn, sometimes it's an eighth of a turn, whatever it is that you can get. When you feel it like this, you don't really want to feel any play, but what you're allowing is you're allowing, when this starts getting hot, all of these materials are going to expand. When it expands, it's going to make it tight. And if you have it tight when it's cold, when it gets hot, it's going to get really tight, it's going to heat up, it's going to heat the grease, and it's going to weld this wheel barren together and it's going to lock up or it's basically just going to fail. So snug down, back off, about a quarter of a turn. Pretty easy. We can get this cotter pin in here and then we'll be done with this part of it. Okay, so here we are. I got my nut is behind this little castle piece. I got this lined up. I pulled my cotter pin down through the top and I bent this to the left and to the right. Now my rotor free wheels nicely. I don't have any real play. And now I'm gonna put the dust cap on, which I have here. And I'm gonna tap this carefully around the edges so that it goes on there nicely and I don't dent up my dust cap. Okay, so I get my dust cap on here like this. I'm going to use a little brass bar, go along the edge here, just kind of tap it on, walk it on there, you know, evenly, like this, until I have it bottomed out on here like this. Now look at that, mint. Okay, so what's next? The caliper is next, so let's talk about the calipers. Okay, so here we have our calipers. They come uh, what they call loaded, so it already has the pads in there. Um, the bolts are right here, and uh, the line I've placed on here. So let's just talk about the line. I can take this off of here, and I will show you. All right, you'll get the line. You'll get what is called what is known as a banjo bolt. A banjo bolt is hollow in the center and has a hole in the side of it, so fluid can flow through it. So what you do with your banjo bolt is, you put a uh, copper washer on the bolt, then your brake line goes onto the copper washer, on top of the copper washer, then a washer goes back on top of it, and then it's screwed into your caliper as so. So if you look at it like this, it kind of, let me get this squared back away, it looks like this. So what you have is you have the caliper, a copper washer, the brake line itself, another copper washer, and then the bolt. So you've got your line is sandwiched between two copper washers. So this caliper has never been put on other than a test fit, so the uh, piston is fully retracted, so, we, so we're as wide open as we can be. The other thing we want to look for is the bleeder. Uh, whenever you install a caliper, you always want to have this bleeder on the top so that um, any air that's in the system is going to want to naturally rise up. Just like when you have, you know, bubbles in a barrel or your, or your sink or tub or whatever, those bubbles are going to rise to the surface and pop and the air is going to go into the atmosphere. The same thing is going to happen in your brake system or it's going to want to have. So if you put it so that your uh, brake bleeder is downwards, you are going to trap air in the system and you're always going to have a spongy pedal. So uh, rule of thumb is bleeders always face up. So I'm going to take my caliper with my loose line on here and I am going to 
slip it so my line goes in the back because I already know I want it to go that way. And I'm going to set this right on here. So, okay, so I got my caliper dropped down over the top. You can see through here my pads line up nicely with my, with my rotor. Everything looks right. And then on the back side, this is where it's interesting. So this is where you see your caliper bolt here goes into the bracket. Your lower caliper bolt goes into the bracket here. And then you got your brake line here. As you can see, you can notice what I was talking about with the banjo bolt. The copper washer, the line, the copper washer. I got my line going like this on the back side of this um, spindle. And then it comes around to the front and it goes into this bracket on the frame. There's a little horseshoe clip that's going to hold it there. And my steel line is going to screw into this end. I don't have my steel line on there because I'm redoing this whole system. But that's what you'll see. So what I'm going to do now, and um, oh yeah, one more time to review. Notice how my brake bleeder is on the top at the 12 o'clock position. I'm going to get an Allen wrench and I'm going to tighten these. And then we're going to be in pretty good shape. Tighten up this caliper onto the bracket. So, I mean, you'll feel it screw in. You want to make sure with your bolts that you, you screw them in. You get them started and screw them in by hand pretty much as far as you can before you start really wrenching on them because you don't want one bolt to um, cause a bind for the other. And let's see here. I'm getting there, getting there, getting there. All right, there's one. Here's my other. Having an um, Allen wrench with a ball head kind of helps, gives you some angle. You can get them on a socket, uh, whatever works for you. I'm going to snug these up. Not crazy tight, but, you know, fairly tight. There's one. We got that. I got my brake line that's up there. I'm going to take my... Uh, my horseshoe clip and I'm going to put my horseshoe clip on here to hold my brake line. So now what we have is our brake conversion. So we've gone from the drum to the disc brake in a very very short amount of time. I'm going to continue with this and I'm going to do the other side of the car and then, and then I'll show you what the other side looks like all done. It's going to be basically the same process as this. I'm going to remove the parts. I'm going to put the new parts on. And then this end of the car will be good. I'll show you the process there. Then we're going to move to the rear and we're going to do rear discs on this car as well. I had that kit made and um, we're going to, we'll work on that together as well. So stay tuned. Alrighty folks, so here we are. We've got our uh, 64 Imperial. We've converted it to disc brakes. Walked you through the whole process. The next thing we'll do is we'll move to the back. Um, either I'll continue this video for the rear or we'll just wrap it up here. So I'm going to assume that we're going to wrap it up for today anyways. It's getting a little late around here. Um, so I appreciate you tuning in. Uh, any comments? or questions feel free to leave them below. Um, I can 
answer any questions. I can help you out with just about anything. I can hook you up with the folks that made the stuff for me to make this kit where it's basically unobtainium and you can't get it. And um, I'm glad that I was able to come on and show you this. I mean, these cars are super popular. They're not going to be on the cover of Hot Rod Magazine or anything like that. But they're, they're really cool old cars. Well, I'm doing this entire car. I'll do some more videos as I do my other things with it. We're kind of modernizing the whole thing. Doing the four-wheel disc brakes. Uh, fuel injection will go on the original 413 that's in here. It's got a push-button transmission. Uh, we're we're going to update the, um, the original air conditioning in climate control do some more modern modern upgrades on that um, we're also going to be upgrading the stereo system so basically you'll have a 64 imperial convertible it's a super classic car but you'll have all of the modern comforts like um, I put B Bilstein shocks on this so it'll handle nicely uh, most of the suspension is pretty much new uh, cleaned it all up and uh, basically just trying to make a really nice cruising car for my customer here. So I appreciate you tuning in. I'm Troy with V-Twins to V8s. Visit my website, subscribe to my channel, and I, I really appreciate the support. So if you have any questions, you need any help, make, make your comments below. Give me a like, on, on, you know, hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you like my content. If there's something that you want to see, Definitely hit me up, um, send me a message, and uh, say, hey, you know, I, I'd like you to do a video on whatever, and I'll see if I can weave it in with whatever I'm doing. Uh, thanks a lot, and good luck on your projects.